This is the Oculus Quest 2, a $300 VR headset. This is the HP Reverb G2, a $600 VR headset. This is the Valve Index, a $1,000 VR headset. And in this huge box is the Vario VR1, a $6,000 VR headset. So let's check it out. So this little adventure all started a few weeks ago on eBay as I'm regularly on the hunt for rare and retro VR headsets to buy as collector's items. Headsets like this retro Nintendo Virtual Boy, this early HTC Vive development kit with these crazy looking controllers, and this Crescent Bay prototype from Oculus. And it's on eBay where I found this extremely rare headset, the Vario VR1. This headset originally launched way back in February 2019 from Helsinki-based company Vario as an enterprise-focused headset that was sold for an eye-watering $6,000. Having tried almost every consumer-focused VR headset available on the market, when I saw this listed for a fraction of the original price, I just couldn't resist as I was intrigued to find out what using an ultra-high-end VR headset like this would be like for gaming and if the unique features would be worth the high price tag. I'll be giving you my full conclusion on that at the end of the video. But first, let's start with what comes in this huge box. You get a Vario breakout box, which converts USB-C to DisplayPort, USB cables for power and for connecting to the PC, a power cable, a power adapter, two DisplayPort cables as two are required for this headset, and of course you get the headset itself with a whopping 10 meter dual fiber optic cable with two USB-C connectors at the end. You're probably wondering, Mike, where are the controllers and how is this thing tracked? Well, you have to provide your own controllers, which can be either Vive Ones or Index controllers as it's fully compatible with Steam VR. And you also have to provide your own Steam VR 2.0 base stations for tracking. Four of them, actually, to be precise, and luckily I had a couple of extra base stations lying around that I could use for this test. In terms of specs, this thing is an absolute beast, and one of the standout features of this headset is what Vario refer to as bionic display technology, providing what they claim to be near human eye resolution in virtual reality. Now to achieve this, they've implemented two displays per eye in the headset. Each eye has a 1440 by 1600 AMOLED context display in the background with a second small postage stamp size 1920 by 1080 focus display right in the middle of your field of view. Although that might not sound that impressive on paper, it's the size of the focus display that makes all the difference as being so small it's an incredibly pixel dense display at 6000 pixels per inch. They actually combine the two displays by using mirrors and blend them together. It's not completely seamless, but this technique provides an incredibly sharp and clear view of the virtual world right in the center of your field of view, with a more conventional looking VR display surrounding it. Think of it like fixed foveated rendering, which you see in headsets like the Oculus Quest, but using physical displays instead of software. To make the image in the headset look as sharp and clear as possible, they use pancake lenses instead of traditional Fresnel lenses, which are found in most, if not all, consumer VR headsets. These expensive lenses don't have the telltale ridges of a Fresnel lens, eliminating any god rays and glare in high contrast scenes. With the high-end visuals has to come some compromises though, which means the lenses and displays combined provide a field of view of just under 90 degrees, which runs at just 60 hertz. Another standout feature of this headset is Vario's own 2020 eye tracking technology, which detects your interpupillary distance, which is the spacing between your eyes, and calibrates the lens's positions automatically when you put the headset on. It's pretty cool stuff. With all this fancy tech jammed inside this headset, it's quite heavy coming in at 950 grams, but the head strap does do a good job of balancing out the weight with some clever design and comfortable padding. The recommended specs from Vario to run this beast suggests an i7 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 2080 Ti. I'm gonna be testing this out with an i9 9900K, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and an RTX 3090, so hopefully I can really push this headset to the max and show you what it's like. 
So now for the fun part, testing it out with some VR demos and some Steam VR games. Here you can see the 2020 eye tracking technology in action whilst I'm looking around this supermarket display. I believe this is a concept demo for market research so companies can put test subjects in a VR experience like this to find out if their products visually stand out on the shelf compared to their competitors. They could then use the data provided to find out which designs are more attractive and hold the most attention from a potential consumer and tweak their packaging design accordingly. Having never tried VR eye tracking before, I was really impressed at just how quickly and accurately it was able to track my eye's movements. This demo of an aeroplane cockpit provided a nice opportunity to test the bionic displays to look at some of the finer details of the cockpit up close. I've added a slight border around the focus display in this footage so you can clearly see the difference between the clarity of the focus display compared to the outside context display and this gives a pretty accurate example of what it looks like inside the headset itself. During this demo, I could clearly read all the navigational displays, switches and toggles in the cockpit whilst they were in the center of my field of view, and it's here where this headset really shines. It's when you see this level of clarity, you understand why companies like Boeing are using Vario headsets for cost-effective simulation and training applications. This next demo is a photogrammetry scan of a studio in Helsinki and the fine detail in this scene is just insane to the point where it felt very real. I could clearly read most of the CD labels on the shelf and I could see the fine detail and textures in the sculptures. <laughs> just look at this brazen little guy here. I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go, right? <laughs> The photogrammetry was so impressive in this scene that it got me thinking that it would be an excellent way to visit museums and art galleries, especially now when most of these attractions are closed to the public. The final demo is this demo from Volvo, and it shows off what you can do with this technology to wow corporate clients and consumers. The car is built around you from a blueprint into the final car, and just like in previous demos, it's insane how clear and sharp the dashboard displays and buttons look. Imagine walking into a car dealership in the future and being able to sit in the virtual driver's seat and checking out the various textures and color options in detail so you know exactly what you're gonna get ahead of your purchase. But fancy demos aside, like I mentioned earlier, this headset is also compatible with Steam VR, so of course I jumped straight into Half-Life Alex, which just celebrated its one year anniversary. The headset worked just fine when combined with the Valve Index controllers, although the drop in frame rate due to the capped 60 frames per second was particularly noticeable and not as smooth as playing with a traditional VR headset like the Valve Index or Oculus Quest 2. But when using the Vario instead of pushing forward in the game, I was regularly stopping and just soaking up all the detail in the environments. I've played through Half-Life Alex multiple times, but I was finding things that I'd just never seen before. I found myself reading ingredients on the back of beer cans, taking the time to look at hidden sketches, and reading a newspaper that I found on a park bench that I completely took for granted in previous playthroughs. Half-Life Alex is still one of the most immersive VR games available to date, and if you haven't played it already, I'd highly recommend you go check it out. What was great to see is that the game seemed to scale really well on high-end hardware like the Vario, which gets me excited that this game will always be a great benchmark to test future VR headsets. So after testing this headset for a couple of weeks, here are my final thoughts on the Vario VR1. For a headset that was originally released in 2019, it still surpasses the latest consumer VR headsets that we have available on the market today in terms of pure visual performance, despite being locked at just 60 frames per second. When you have your eyes trained directly in the center, the virtual world is exceptionally sharp and vivid and better than anything else I've tried when it comes to clarity. However, it is just a small section of your field of view that looks super crisp so as soon as you move your eyes from the center, the illusion is kind of broken. Also, I did notice that I could just make out the mirrors that make the dual display technology possible in the edges of my peripheral vision. This could be down to my low IPD, but it just goes to show that the clarity definitely has some compromises. But the features that really stood out to me aside from the visual clarity were the eye tracking and auto IPD adjustment. 
The second you put the headset on, it automatically adjusts to your IPD, ensuring that the VR experience is perfectly aligned with your eyes. I can't stress enough how cool this is. Maybe not necessary for us consumers who will likely just set up their headset IPD once and never touch it again, but for showing multiple clients VR projects or showing demos at events, this takes away a lot of the friction of setting up a headset for each individual user. Also, this was the first headset where I had the opportunity to try out the eye tracking capability and I was really impressed. It was extremely accurate and I can see this being a staple feature of many future VR headsets, not only for the added social interaction it provides, but also the hardware makers will be scrambling to get hold of that valuable data from you. So in conclusion, would I recommend any gamers out there doing what I did and buying a headset like this on eBay if you can find one for the right price? Absolutely not. Although the headset was capable of running games like Half-Life Alex, which admittedly looked phenomenal, it wasn't a smooth experience and some games like Beat Saber just wouldn't render the scenes correctly. However, if you're a company that demands the highest possible resolution experience for your design workflow, simulated training experience, or for market research purposes, then the Vario range is definitely worth considering. 6,000 US dollars might sound like a lot of money for us as consumers, but for companies like Volvo or Boeing, this really isn't an expensive investment for what it can offer. So that is my hands-on with the Vario VR1, and it was an interesting experiment for me, and I hope you enjoyed the video too. Something a little bit different from the traditional consumer VR tech and gaming videos that I make on the channel. For me, it was interesting to get an insight into the world of ultra high-end enterprise VR hardware, as some of the features in this headset may be available in consumer-facing VR devices in the future, particularly the eye tracking and possibly the auto IPD adjustment. It's not exactly surprising that it wasn't a great gaming experience as this headset was designed for the enterprise sector after all. It's also worth noting that the model that I have is an older headset from Vario and they're now on their third generation headset, the Vario VR3, which has surpassed the tech in the VR1 and taken it even further. The new headset features a higher resolution, higher refresh rate and wider field of view and also has full stereo color pass-through cameras, enabling some interesting possibilities with mixed reality content. The pass-through cameras are so good in fact that people are driving cars whilst wearing the VR3 for driver training and there's even a clip of someone threading a needle using the pass-through mode which is extremely impressive. You never know, maybe the latest model will be better for VR gaming and maybe one day I'll find one of those on eBay in the future and I can show you that headset too. If you have any questions about the Vario VR1 or about VR in general, please chuck them down in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future VR content and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.